Good morning. I'm Asan Giordano, and this is your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, March 12th, 2020. It's currently cloudy and 45 degrees in Baltimore. Today's high will be 57 degrees, and the low will be 44. Well, the World Health Organization declared Wednesday that the global coronavirus crisis is now a pandemic as U.S. stocks plunged into bear market territory and several American cities joined European counterparts in banning large gatherings. By reversing course and using the change word pandemic that it had previously shied away from, the U.N. Health Agency sought to shock lethargic countries into pulling out all the stops. And it appears people in our country are doing just that. Maryland officials are in talks on how to hold a mail-in only election for the April 28th Democratic primaries. Should it become necessary in response to multiple confirmed cases of the new coronavirus in the state, says the Baltimore Sun. Senate President Bill Ferguson said Wednesday that he has been in discussions with the State Board of Elections, but stressed that any changes he would propose to Maryland's election would be done through bipartisan talks. Republican Governor Larry Hogan spokesman Mike Ritchie confirmed that the governor has been working with the State Election Board on ways to minimize voter confusion and disruption on primary day. Meanwhile, Baltimore City Election Board Director Armstead Jones encouraged that the powers to be move to a mandatory mail-in election for the primary, which would include voting for candidates in the city's upcoming mayoral, city council president, and city council races, as well as a special election in the 7th Congressional District. Jones said that he normally relies on hundreds of elderly judges each election day, the very demographic of people being encouraged to avoid large crowds because of their heightened susceptibility to the coronavirus. Quote, I can't take a chance and open up on election day and not have the necessary staff to man our polling places, Jones said. I'm hoping that whatever decision is being thought about will happen within days because we need to make know what the plan of action will be. Thus far, nine Marylanders have tested positive for the coronavirus, including several people in Montgomery County and Prince George's County. A Baltimore County resident was just confirmed with the the virus, and an additional person who lives in Montana but visited Anne Arundel County has also tested positive, Governor Hogan announced on Wednesday. Now, Senator, Senate President Ferguson said that he received word from the state attorney general's office that legislation would not be needed. Hogan has already declared a state of emergency in Maryland due to the coronavirus. With that in place, state law allows the governor to issue a special proclamation to postpone elections, specify alternate voting locations, or specify alternate voting systems. Maryland already allows voters to cast absentee ballots without stated reason, but voting by mail has never been mandatory. The state elections board last week reminded voters in light of growing coronavirus concerns that anyone who prefers to vote from home can request an absentee ballot and they don't need to give a reason. The logistics of organizing a mail-only election less than seven weeks before the primary would be a complicated and expensive measure and would cost roughly $8 million or more in postage just to send the nearly 4 million Marylanders their ballots. A decision would have to be made rather quickly, like within the next few days, in order to pull off such an action in time for the April 28th primaries, which are seven weeks away. No matter what course of action the state election board takes, voters need to take quick and easy access to information as a switch to mail-in voting would be a culture shock for the city, which only four years ago, remember, Witnessed his primary election results decertified for the first time in state history due to administrative irregularities. It was brought to light by a group of local activists led by yours truly that uncovered the enormous amount of voting irregularities. Now, the NBA has suspended its season until further notice after a Utah Jazz player tested positive Wednesday for the coronavirus, a move that came only hours after the majority of the league owners were leaning toward playing games without fans in the arenas. Now, there will be no games at all, at least for the time being. A person with knowledge of the situation said that the Jazz player who tested positive was all-star center Rudy Gobert. 
The person spoke to the Associated Press and confirmed his diagnosis. Now, earlier, the Thunder Jazz game Wednesday night in Oklahoma City was postponed, with the only explanation a public address announcing unforeseen cir circumstances. Starting lineups were announced, and it appeared the game was ready to get underway after a conversation among the officials led to the teams going back to the locker room and the officials leaving the floor. The announcement that the game was called off came about 35 minutes after the schedule of the start time. Now, while the NBA has suspended their season, the NCAA has made almost a similar decision, but they thus far have only canceled the certain post uh, postseason tournament games. But most of their upcoming NCAA March Madness tournament will be played without fans in attendance, which will also be a culture shock to fans and players alike. Underscoring the mounting challenge, the case count outside China has multiplied 13 fold over the, over the last two weeks to over 118,000 with the disease now responsible for 4,291 deaths. With officials saying that Europe has become the new epicenter, Italy's cases soared again to 12,462 infections and 827 deaths, numbers second only to China. In response to the mounting crisis, Italy announced that all shops and businesses except pharmacies and grocery stores would be closed nationwide beginning today and designated billions in financial relief to cushion economic shocks from the virus. Its latest efforts to adjust to the fast evolving crisis that silenced the usually bustling heart of the Catholic faith, St. Peter Square. In Iran, by far the hardest hit country in the Middle East, the senior vice president and two other cabinet ministers were reported to have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The illness caused the Iran reported another jump in deaths by 62 to 354 behind only China and Italy. Now, the effectiveness of travel restrictions and quarantines will likely drop substantially as the COVID-19 the coronavirus spreads globally making it impossible for countries to keep the virus out. Health officials will also need to be more flexible in their coordinated response efforts as the epicenters are likely to shift quickly and dramatically as demonstrated by the recent eruptions in Iran and Italy. Earlier, Conti emphasized fighting the outbreak must not come at the expense of civil liberties, suggesting that Italy is likely to adopt the draconian quarantine measures that helped China push down new infections from thousands per day to a trickle and allowed its manufacturers to restart production lines. China's new worry is that the coronavirus could re-enter the country from abroad. Beijing's city government announced that all overseas visitors will be quarantined for 14 days. Of 24 new cases reported Wednesday, five arrived from Italy and one from the United States. Well, we're making sure here at DMV Daily that we stay safe and we're cautioning everybody to remain vigilant and take this coronavirus very seriously. I'm your man, Mr. Politics, and this has been your DMV Daily Dose for Thursday, March 12th, 2020. For more information on the coronavirus, what's being canceled and what's not, make sure you go over to the website at www.dmvdaily.news.